Happy Golden Blue Day! Tomorrow is Golden Blue Day. So this 100% Golden Blue and special meat. <laughs> creative carnivore kitchen no plants no dairy the next level cooking show carnivore recipes with meat fish seafood eggs gelatin flavored seltzer water and salt from super easy to complicated from quickly done to many hours in the kitchen I always say everybody's body and brain are different and you got to figure out what works best for you. The carnivore lifestyle has tremendous benefits, healing effects and is the best elimination diet. There are many different ways how to do carnivore. I found a way that momentarily works the best for me. In this cooking show, I'll show you it doesn't have to be boring and can be very creative, delicious and fun. I already created so many carnivore recipes on Instagram, at Carnivore Girl. And I have this never-ending list on my phone with tons of ideas. My brain is a gift and a curse. Have fun with this episode! Welcome to my creative carnivore kitchen. So tomorrow is Gordon Bleu day. Gordon Bleu, what is that? So apparently it's first mentioned in 1940 in uh, Switzerland, in Brieg. Uh, yes, I'm from Switzerland, but not from Brieg. I'm from Bern. Uh, my dad lives in Brieg right now. So anyways, and it is uh, originally made with pork but now it, it's also now they also use veal and chicken and whatever I actually know it more yeah with veal and chicken yes I didn't know it with pork that much I didn't know that that was actually the original way so what is it it is a um, cutlet and you cut it open and you fill it with a piece of ham and a piece of cheese and then you bread it and you fry it. Of course, I'm gonna make mine 100% carnivore. It already sounds very carniv carnivorous, what is great, but I'm not gonna use cheese. I'm also not gonna use ham. So I'm already gonna show you what I'm gonna use for ham. Um, I thought I'm just gonna use a slice of roast. Here is a recipe for just how to make a regular roast. And uh, I usually make my roasts very rare or, well, it's still raw in the middle, but so uh, maybe that one here. Yeah, I made it yesterday and I'm happy. I still have some leftover. I ate the rest of it. So maybe I'm gonna, uh, I can put it in a frying pan and um, make it a little bit more done or I can also just use it like that. So yeah, this is what I cut off. Oh, maybe this one looks good, actually. This is what I cut off. So just a thin slice of roast. That will be my ham. Actually, I should have started with the cutlet. Um, pork, I don't use pork yet, except for prosciutto. So I don't wanna use pork. I also don't wanna use veal or chicken. I thought it's too boring. I wanna use something special. Ostrich! I have here ostrich steaks. So I don't, it, I think it should work. I have two, so that's great because I only want to use one because I also want to um, just eat an ostrich, ostrich steak like that without anything special, just like this with a little bit of salt and fry it in a pan. But so because I got them those ostrich steaks with a lot of other cool meats from Costa Mesa, from wild fork foods yes and um so i needed i need to use those up and i was like oh okay let's use it for this recipe I mean sounds much cooler ostrich than the veal is i love veal too it's super expensive well ostrich is also expensive anyway it sounds better than chicken or pork i would say 
and it's interesting so i don't know how it will turn out we will see i'm excited oh i think this piece is actually pretty perfect yes so let's cut this open no you just want to like make a pouch let's cut it open here because you just as i cut it open you just want to make a pouch so you don't want to cut through here not through here and not through here so i just want it open here so big enough you can put something in it so i cut it a bit unevenly here it was much thicker so i kind of did this i don't know i just think that's cool so i want to put a slice of ham so and i also like that so now i'm using um ostrich and here i'm using beef so we have some beef in here and now the cheese i'm not using cheese i thought i'm just going to use a bit of scrambled eggs um here is a video where i make scrambled eggs in many different methods many different ways so we're gonna put that in here So I remember, especially with the uh, um, chicken breast one, they usually put um, a toothpick, a toothpick to close it up. So we could try to close it up, but you can also just leave it open. Maybe just like a little bit here. So, and here's my setup for breading. Here is the steak. I'm gonna put some salt around it. This is Himalayan pink salt. So, we're gonna start with chicken flour. Here, chicken flour. Here is the recipe for that. So, I wanna put chicken flour over it so ready for step two. Oh, actually before here I'm gonna I put I, I made um, ground beef in here and there's still a bit of fat and there is a little bit more tallow so I'm gonna warm up this pan over here with the fat in it and so in here for breading, we want an egg, salt. Ooh. Cover it in egg wash. That's how we call this, egg wash. Washing it in egg. And now here, I want to cover it with, here you can see it better beef flour here is the recipe for beef flour so. So. try to get it everywhere kind of then directly into the pan good I have it on the highest heat right now. I'm going to turn it down a tiny bit. So, and now I just want to fry it. And um, so ostrich. Ostrich is really lean and it's not good if it's totally done. And um, what's inside? Roast and scrambled eggs. That doesn't have to be cooked. Well, the scrambled eggs are cooked through. The roast is not cooked through because I didn't want it to. But so I don't have to worry about getting it all the way done. Like the chicken Gordon Bleu is of course always totally done. Actually, all of the Gordon Bleu, I know the meat is totally cooked through because you want then that the cheese starts melting in the middle. But um, yeah, I'm happy with this and I definitely don't want the ostrich to be totally done. So over here, if you've seen me breading before stuff like this, 
at the end and usually this now I just had one piece sometimes I'm breading stuff and I have many pieces so then it's all a mess I have a lot of chicken flour left a lot of beef flour left this time not almost nothing not much at all this of course I can put back um, into the containers and keep it but then what I do is I, I um, and then it also makes all the mess because of the egg you know and then my my hands are dirty so usually then I put everything into that well I can do it with this here so all the rest goes into the egg as I mentioned, usually it's like much more like clumpy stuff like chicken flour, beef flour and uh, mix that and then put that in the pan and eat it. And this is so delicious. Ooh, and look that how it, that's how it looks. So I put it on quite high heat and then maybe after a minute I turned it down to middle heat left it uh, in the pan for two, three, uh, the first time probably three, four minutes, then I flipped it over. Again, raised the heat because so I wanted a bit of that crust. And then after a minute, I turned it down to middle heat. And then on the second side was probably two, three minutes. Um, I'm pretty sure it's, yeah, it's still raw in the middle, I think. Not even rare, probably still raw. But that's how I like it. So let's try it. So I already took the toothpicks out and I'm just going to bite into it like a sandwich. Yeah, in a way, it kind of is, huh? Um, yeah, I'm probably just going to make a mess. Let's make a mess. Ah. Mmm. Oh yeah. Mmm. -hmm. That's perfect for me. It's a uh, warm inside, but still raw. And yeah, this gave it a bit of a crust. The breading. Oh yeah. I'm gonna put that back in. Oh. I'm gonna shove it back in. That's a bit of a problem I have with, um, I like eating meat raw or very rare, and then biting into it is a bit hard. So it's easier if you slice it thinly, raw meat, it's easier to eat when you slice it thinly, but I like biting into steaks, into food. So yeah, but super delicious. Yeah, I like this combination. Mm. Happy Gordon Bleu Day! Bye! Servus! Servus! Thanks for watching! If you try out this recipe, please tag me and let me know how you like it. Subscribe, share, like, comment, follow me on Instagram at Carnivore Girl. See you next week in my next episode of Carnivore Girl's Creative Carnivore Kitchen. No plants, no dairy, the next level cooking show.